Hi guys, welcome to another protopilot video tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be creating a pin entry interface. So similar to something you'd see at the when you log into your iPhone and if you've got a pin set, I've I've created a four digit pin entry prototype here. So let's have a quick demo. So I've got my custom number pad here and I've got my four little pin dots and I've created it so that there's some conditional logic that looks at what you're entering and then if it's successful, it's gonna let me into this second screen. So I'm going to type my correct code, which is imaginatively one, two, three, and you've guessed it, four. And when it's checked that that's the correct pin, then it's gonna let me into this success screen. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna be building this pin entry system using two components. We're gonna be building a component for the number pad. So each one of these numbers is an instance of the number pad component. And we're gonna be building a component for the dots. So the first thing we're gonna do is focus on the number pad component. So I'm going to come over to my components panel here. I'm going to double click on the button component, which I've already created this component shell. There's nothing really in it at the moment. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the root of the button component and we're going to add a tap trigger. And to that tap trigger, we're going to add a send response. Before we continue further, we need to create a variable so I'm going to come over to my variables panel. I'm going to add a variable and I'm going to call it number. And we just want to make sure that it's a number variable, which is by default. Okay, we can come back to our send response now and we're going to send a message to the current scene and we're going to send the message number selected. We're going to check this box, send value together and the value we're going to send is the variable number. Okay, and this is all we need to do to set up our number pad component. Okay, so now we're back in our scene and we're gonna do some setup here in our scene. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some variables. So I'm gonna come down to my variables panel here and I'm gonna create a variable called selected number. I use camel case and we're gonna make sure that's just camel case is just the way you type this with an uppercase for each new word. And I'm gonna make sure that my variable is a number variable. The second variable I'm going to create is a variable called change flag. I love flags, I don't really. So change flag. Um, so flag is a, it's a bit of a programming term actually. Um, a flag is just a, well, it's like a flag. It's like a, it's like a marker. It's a thing. It's a thing that you, you know, will happen that you'll use to create some other logic. So that's what we're going to set. And our flag is also going to be a number variable. Okay. So we've got our two variables set up. We're going to come over to the trigger panel and we're going to add a receive trigger and what we're going to receive from the current scene is our number selected message so this is the message that we set up inside of our number pad component we're going to receive and we're going to rename this we're going to receive number selected and we're going to assign it to a variable and the variable we're going to assign it to is selected number Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a response to this trigger. So we're going to add an assign response. And we're going to assign to the variable change flag, which I can see is misspelled. Let me just change that first. Once you use variables, you you can't change the names, or if you do change the names of them, you have to change every way you've used them. So you wanna make sure you get them correct. Okay, so let's just go back to that assign response. Let's choose change flag. And we're gonna add a formula in here. And the formula is going to be change flag 
plus one. And basically what that's doing is that's giving me a unique flag. So basically I can use this with a detect trigger and see that every time that it's changed, I can do some stuff. Okay, so that's basically what it's doing. It's giving me a unique action that I can use to change things. Okay, moving on. So talking about detects, the next thing we're gonna add is a detect trigger. And surprisingly, we're gonna detect when the change flag variable changes. Okay, so we want to do two things when this change flag variable changes. We want to let our prototype know that we've tapped a button and we also want to change the, the little pin dots here. So before I add anything to the detect trigger, I'm just going to add another variable. Just add eight for this scene. Oops pesky little thing and we're going to change this variable name to pin and we're going to make it a text variable so this variable is going to be where we hold the the pin number that we're typing in and then we're eventually going to use the value of that pin number to check whether it's the correct pin number or not okay so coming back to our detect trigger we're going to add an assign and we're going to assign to the pin variable and we're going to assign a formula and the formula is going to be pin so we want to we don't want to wipe out any values we've already added to the pins we want to keep those values we want to add more items to the pins so we want to select pin plus and we want to choose another variable selected number Okay, so remember the selected number is the variable that holds the number we've just selected. That's why it's called selected number. Okay, so with that done, we're just going to add another response. So we're going to add a send response and we're going to call this send tapped. And we're going to send the message to the current scene and the message we're going to send is tapped. And we want to send a value with this. So we're going to check the send value together box. And the value we want to send is the change flag value. OK, so next we're going to set up the pin dots here. So we're going to go into our pin dot component. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a couple of variables. So we're going to set a variable called name and a second variable called instance name. And they're both going to be number variables. And come over to our triggers panel and we're going to add a receive trigger. And from the current scene, we're going to receive the tapped message. We're going to check assign to variable and we're going to assign the tat value to our instance name variable. Okay, we're going to add another trigger. This time we're going to add a detect. And we're going to call this detect instance name. We're going to choose the instance name variable. That's what we want to detect the change in. And we're going to add a condition. And the condition is going to be if instance name equals name. So we're going to select the instance name variable. So if the instance name equals the name variable, we're going to change the color of our pin dot. And we're going to change it to black because well, it's all black already. Um, actually, you have to select it. This is a bit weird. And just make sure the field's 100. Um, you may not have to do that, but we'll just do it belt and braces. Um, and we're going to leave everything else at its defaults. So what are we doing here? So we just, we've got these four dots, but we need to address each dot as a unique item. 
So we've got these two variables, this name variable and this instant variable, and we want to compare the two. So we want to basically use a method called recursion to introspect our own component. Remember that a component has a number of instances. They're the children of the component, but there's no way built into Protopy to identify each one of those instances in a unique way. So we need to, that's essentially what we're doing. We're building in the ability to identify those, those instances in a unique way. And actually what we need to do is we come over to this name variable. We need to actually make it overridable. And what we're going to do is we're going to give each one of our instances a unique name. And then our condition here is going to do a conditional check and make sure that they match. Okay, so we're pretty much finished inside of this component. We're going to move back into the scene. Okay, so here we are back in the scene and there's something we need to do. If we check our number pad component, we can see that there's no overrides here. There's no way to add a unique name. And similar to the pin, we need to add a unique name for each of these instances. So let's just right click and go back into the number pad component. And all we need to do is come down to this number variable and we need to make that overridable. So just check that box and then come back into the scene. So we now need to give unique names to all of our objects. So let's just start working our way through the number pack component. So that's zero, so that's fine. Nine needs to be nine. So we just need to change all of these components to the number that they are. Just working my way through these. Seven, six, Feels a bit like a countdown here. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. I don't know if you know that series. It was a really old series back in the 60s, but I was counting down. Just came out naturally. <laughs> right, okay. So let's go over to our dots and we need to do the same thing we need to call those so this is dot four i won't do the thunderbirds thing again don't worry three two and dot one okay okay so that's all of our unique instance names added to all of our objects Okay, so we're at the stage where we can do a quick test. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to our variables here. And we're just going to hit this little bug icon on the right hand side for both pin and change flag. And that's going to bring up these two green boxes here. And you can see the two green boxes are over here on the prototype as well. So we're just going to start typing some numbers. So I'm going to type four, five, six, three and you can see that the number has appeared in our pin variable and you can also see that our change flag variable was counted up from one to four so everything seems to be working correctly the final thing we need to do to make this whole prototype work is to do the detection to detect whether the pin is correct or not so we're going to come over to our triggers panel and we're going to add a detect trigger and we're going to call this detect pin. And we're going to detect the pin variable. Because remember, the pin variable is where our, our pin is being saved. And we're going to add a condition to this. And we want to see if the pin is correct. So we're going to say is the pin variable equal to, and this value you're going to put in here is going to be the correct answer. So let's put in one, two, three, four. You can put whatever you want. And we're just going to name this um, condition. If pin is correct. Okay, so if it's correct, we're going to do some stuff. So 
We've got this six, the success group here to sitting here. It's currently at opacity zero. So I'm just going to pull this up for a second. So this is our very basic success screen. So we're going to move people onto this success screen if they get the pin correct. So what we're going to do, we're going to add an opacity. And with this first opacity, we're just going to hide the pin entry group. So this group here, we're going to turn that down to zero. And we're going to add another opacity. And this is going to be the one that's going to show that's the success group. So we're just going to take the success group as the target and we're going to turn the opacity up to 100. Okay. Let's come over to our preview and give it another test. In fact, we can turn off these um, little bug icons. And remember, our pin is 1234. So if we type in something that's not 1234, then obviously nothing's going to happen. I haven't set a, um, you know, failed result. So you could obviously, when you're doing this detect over here, you could also say if the pin is not correct. Actually, let me just add that for you. So you add another condition and you could say if the pin does not equal one, two, three, four, and then you'd put in here any of your failed conditions. Okay, so let's just go back to the correct one. So come back over to preview. If I add one, two, three, and four, then I instantly go to the success screen. And I, I do that because it's detecting every time the pin changes, the pin variable changes, that's changing every time I add a new value to it. So every time I add a new value to it, every time I add I tap a number pad, it's checking to see if it's correct or not. Okay, so this about wraps up this video. If you like the video, then please um, give it a like. If you want to see more of these videos and you're, you're enjoying the content on the channel, then please hit subscribe. That will certainly help me out. Um, if you want access to the source files for this video, then you can go over and subscribe to my Patreon channel. Um, I add all of my YouTube videos, but additionally, um, for, a, for a small um, donation, you get the source files as well. So please do check that out. Okay, hopefully I'll see you on the channel next time. Take it easy.